Hi, I'm Robert Joseph, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this dual pouch boxer brief. Now, a couple of things about this boxer brief is that the legs are a little bit longer and it sits a little bit higher up on your waist than my regular boxer brief. And of course, it has the dual pouch. So um, the top pouch, without being vulgar, is for your twig, and the lower pouch, which I have here in gray, are for your berries. And then underneath the top pouch, there is actually an opening, which I use a binding technique to actually finish the edge. Now, if you don't want to put binding there, you can, of course, just overlock around the opening, and that would actually be fine. However, I do give you another option for finishing it, um, which is an aside in the video. Um, uh, here I have it, and we'll just kind of peek under here, under the top uh, pouch, and you'll see that you can do it with just a slit opening, and this fabric is very soft and it stretches, so it won't be cumbersome to your member um, at all. So that's an option for you, and, and I walk you through that entire process um, in the video. So this pattern takes uh, about a half yard of fabric for the smaller sizes, that's extra small through medium, and it takes about three quarters of a yard for the larger sizes, large through double XL. So, and then of course you'll need the elastic. The other thing that I want to also mention is that anywhere in the video where I use a cover stitch, which I've used here for applying the waistband and hemming, you can use a zigzag stitch. Now, a, quest, a question about the zigzag stitch, using it at, to make the entire garment, I get that question quite a bit. While I don't recommend it, because sometimes they don't come out looking um, like what you expect or very professional looking, uh, you can make it with a zigzag stitch. I would recommend that you shorten your stitch um, to maybe about a 1.5 or 1.75 width of the zigzag. That's how dense the zigzags are. And then you'll need to stretch the fabric a little bit as you sew it. Just remember that I only give you a quarter inch seam allowance. So make sure that that zig and zag doesn't go beyond that quarter inch. Otherwise your garment is going to be smaller. A couple of things about these videos before we begin. So this is a really long video and there are chapter markers below for you to skip ahead. But I will warn you that if you do skip ahead, you may be missing valuable information along the way. So I know that I do get kind of long-winded and wordy sometimes, but I'm really trying to give you the most information I can to actually help you to make your garments come out as best that you can. Another thing is, is that I don't really do voiceovers. I'm actually narrating as I'm sewing and making the garment. So sometimes I stumble and use the wrong word and then correct myself. And I don't really go back and like correct those because I actually correct myself as I'm going along. And it actually makes the, the editing of these videos a little bit easier and quicker. So I just prefer narrating the video. So that way you get kind of the feeling about how I work. And if you were actually taking a class with with me um, what it would be like and I'm hoping that I don't scare you. One last thing is that I don't put background music in my videos anymore. I was having too many problems with people claiming the copyright on the music that I was making for my own videos. So all I can suggest is to put some music on in the background. So now enough with all of the boring little housekeeping things, let's get to actually making your garment. Okay, so we're about ready to get started, and um, I have a few things we need to actually talk about first. So let's first talk about the pattern, because there are, are quite a few pieces. So um, let me pull these smaller pieces off for right now. This is the main body piece right here. Um, and I have a few different fabrics here too, and I'll explain as I go what I'm going to do um, with the, the contrasting fabrics. So this is gonna be my main fabric, and then I have a gray, and a blue here for contrasting. Now the fabric amounts that I give you on the pattern um, information itself is actually for the total amount of fabric that you'll need for one fabric. So if you're not going to be using any contrast, but I'm gonna show you how I can, uh, you can use contrasting fabrics to make it a little bit more interesting. Um, and also 
uh, to actually show you the different parts so you understand how the parts relate to each other. So the main body, um, just like it looks very similar to the boxer brief, um, I'm gonna actually do with this striped fabric. And then we have some other pattern pieces here, and I'm first going to talk about the um, lower pouch. So this is actually the lower pouch. This is actually um, going to be closer to your body. And then the upper part of that lower pouch, those get sewn together. And of course, this is the hole for the outside pouch. Okay, and I'm going to do these in the gray. So uh, these actually get sewn together. And then the next piece, which is the top pouch or the outer pouch, um, this will get folded up to create that pouch, which actually lays on top of the lower pouch. And I'm actually going to do this in the light blue. Now this other piece that is straight, that is actually cut on the straight grain or the, the least amount of stretch, uh, actually the greatest amount of stretch because we need to actually stretch this around the whole area. So I thought this would be not a nice touch to actually bind this hole. Now if you don't want to bind the hole, you don't need to cut this, you can simply overlock this whole area, turn it in, and then stitch it down. Um, but I'm actually going to bind it because that actually makes a little bit nicer uh, presentation and of course it uh, nicer against your body. So again, the main body will be done in this striped fabric. The lower pouches parts will be done in the gray. And then the binding and the uh, top upper pouch will be done in the light blue. So now I'm going to actually get started uh, with just one more thing. Remember, please, to cut out your notches, cut them on the outside of the fabric because you will need these to match everything up when we're actually sewing this to the body. Notice that these, this notch matches the length of the upper lower pouch. And then this is the notch where you've got to fold this up and the two notches there match each other. That's how you're going to fold it. And then we're going to stitch these. Once these are all stitched together, we're going to take these together and then we'll stitch it to the front and this notch will match that notch there. So uh, again, this is probably more of an intermediate uh, pattern to put together, um, but I'm gonna actually get ready to actually cut out the fabric now. And of course, I will just go ahead and speed that up.
Okay, so now that everything is cut out, we're ready to start actually uh, assembling the boxer brief. So um, with the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the whole piece up here on the lower pouch. So I'm gonna move the other pieces away that I don't need. So I need these two pieces and I need the binding piece. Everything else can be set aside for now. So we're going to actually match these two pieces and I know my fabric is a little bit wrinkly. I probably should have steamed it a little bit, but that's okay. So uh, we're going to match these face sides together. So this is the face side, face side. And so I'm going to just put this on top of each other like so. And the only seam that we're gonna sew is actually this lower seam. So we're just gonna sew this little bit together um, with the overlock really quick. Okay, so now that this little seam has been sewn, and if you noticed, I leave just a little bit extra of threads on either side because I don't want it to pull out while I'm working with the piece. So now I'm going to fold this over and I'm gonna actually see the face side. And eventually these seams are going to be sewn together, but we're actually going to apply the binding first. So what we're going to do is we're gonna match the face side of the binding to the face side of the uh, pieces here, the upper uh, lower pouch. And I'm gonna leave a little bit extra at the beginning. That's, and that will help us when we actually do the cover stitch or the zigzag stitch. And all we need to do is overlock the binding all the way around this circle. And you'll want to actually stretch the binding a little bit as you go. So um, try not to stretch this piece. Otherwise the hole here will be uh, stretched out. So I'm gonna start with a little bit extra and then kind of go around as we sew and of course this will actually be kind of like a straight line kind of like this as you sew but of course this is a kind of an intermediate sewing so you should already be pretty uh, well versed on how your overlock works so i'll just pin the beginning of this so you can see that and this will probably be much longer than what you need but i gave you extra just in case so i'm going to go over to the overlock and get this uh, attached Okay, so I've got the binding sewn on the first uh, stitching and I didn't have as much extra left over. So just so you know, I adjusted your pattern for that so you don't run out. Um, and the reason I ha didn't have as much is because I don't think I stretched as much in the beginning. Um, but also um, I have a little bit of a, a gathering here. So I'm probably just gonna correct that really quick off camera and get that sewn back together. Um, the next step that we want to do is uh, try not to stretch this out. I, you have this seam. So this seam, um, we're actually going to cover with the binding. So I'm going to fold the binding over that seam, make sure the seam is toward the binding. And then we're just going to fold the binding over one more time to cover that seam. So I'll do that one more time for you. So let me see here. Okay. So this fabric is very lightweight, so it's hard to work with. Okay, so I have the seam here. So I'm gonna fold that binding over the seam, and then I'm gonna fold the binding over that seam one more time. I'm going to pin that in place. And I kinda wanna make sure that it's pretty much even all the way around. So I'm just taking the binding, folding it over. You want to make sure that you're covering all of that seam allowance. Now I'm going to use a cover stitch to actually stitch this down to keep it in place. But you could also use a short, narrow 
zigzag, but make sure you know you don't want your sewing machine to stretch it out. Okay, so now that this is again all pinned, let me get that a closer look so you can see that. And I've folded it all the way over, and don't worry that this edge is unfinished, that won't um, fray out. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I'm actually going to put this in the cover stitch machine and I'm going to use narrow needles. The gauge is about one and uh, one eighth inch and I'm going to stitch here with one of the stitches coming right here close to the edge and I'll stitch it all the way around. Okay, so um, before I begin here, just a couple of things. Now, if I had left a longer thread here, it would help me a little bit, but I also have uh, longer threads here coming out of the machine. And the reason why I mentioned that is because it will help you um, to actually kind of, at the beginning to get it started, to actually pull here from the back uh, just a little bit um, to help this piece of fabric um, through the machine because it may not pull it um, very easily. So I'm going to push this up underneath the presser foot and usually you can actually lift the presser foot a little bit further if you need to. And I get it there and then I'm going to actually put the needles down. Okay, presser foot down. I'll remove that first pin and maybe the second one. And then I may need to have the threads from the machine handy so they can help kind of pull it, not really hard, but just to help guide it through right at the beginning. You can see there, it's actually um, bunching up because I didn't have enough fabric. So I'm just gonna lift the presser foot up here, kind of pull that a little bit, put the presser foot back down. Okay, so now that we've got the binding on our little hole, let's like flip this over. Um, it looks like my machine needs a little adjusting. I actually may need to take it in for service. Let's hope that's not the case. Um, but um, this is what it looks like. If you have a little extra flipping up like this, it's okay. Um, you can cut that off or not. I'm just going to do that really quickly um, just so it doesn't interfere with the rest of the body of the um, garment. So to do that, I'm just, you could actually use some applique scissors to do this, but I'm just gonna be really careful and make sure that I'm not actually cutting um, any of the body there. So I'm just gonna trim this off here. All right, so I've got that trimmed and then I'm actually just going to trim this other part here and make it flush with the uh, top edge. Let me show you what that is here. So these seams up here, the longer seams, I'm just trimming this extra piece off here in the same line as that, so there's no extra. And then again, I'm gonna fold these over to match face sides. And then I'm going to actually match these seams together. We'll just get these together just to hold them there. Again, I'm working with really lightweight fabric. 
Okay, so um, now that everything is pinned and ready to go, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch out to my regular sewing machine and I'm going to actually straight stitch or tack this area because here in the overlock machine, this is gonna be a tough sell getting that through um, the overlock um, evenly and nicely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just tack this area together and that will kind of smush it down a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come in this way so um, the foot, will be here and the, this fabric will be behind the foot and we'll be sewing toward this end. If we try to sew it going this way, the machine isn't gonna wanna take it right away. So I wanna gradually go into this section. So I'm gonna start right about here, sew up to here and kind of backstitch and just kind of tack that together. Then when we put it into the overlock to go this way, um, it will actually take all of it together. So I'm gonna switch this out to the uh, regular sewing machine um, and stitch that. Okay, so now the uh, tacking is done, that's held together. Now I can actually just put this through the overlock and stitch up the rest of this seam. To do really quickly before I go back to the table is I'm going to take care of these extra threads. If I just clip this off then this um, might actually unravel and come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold this back onto the seam and then I'm going to tack right there um, with the, uh, just a couple of stitches. Okay, so I have an alternative method to the hole. If you don't wanna make this uh, circular hole, there is another way to do this to make an opening for the upper pouch. So um, I was just thinking about this as I was sewing. Um, so just understand this method, you won't have this ring effect um, or the binding. So it'll just be an opening um, that you um, sl slide yourself through. Um, and this actually attaches to the rest of the garment the same. So the way you're gonna do this, it takes a little bit more fabric, but you're gonna cut two of these um, on the fold. So what I'm gonna do is I have this fabric here, is just fold over your fabric to have a fold that's actually, you know, of course, ungrain, on stretch. This is the greatest stretch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're going to lay this edge, all of that, on the fold. Okay, and we're not gonna cut out, we're not gonna cut out this circle. This whole piece is just going to be on the fold. Get this one cut out. Okay, there's one. Set that, whoops, set that aside. And then I'm just gonna cut this extra off. And then fold the fabric again. And we're gonna cut one more out on the fold. Okay, Oops, I'm, don't cut through all the way. Okay, so now go ahead and keep this handy. So open one of them. So you see the face side, this is the top, this is the waistband. So right, this is the edge that it's here. And I'm gonna take the other one, I'm gonna open it up, but I'm gonna lay it down face side. So face to face pieces. Get these all lined up nice and neat. Okay, so then you're gonna need some chalk and you're gonna take your pattern piece. Remember, we have our pieces uh, face sides together and we're gonna lay the pattern piece um, at, at the side edge. This is actually the center where the hole would be. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna line everything up and I'm gonna take my chalk and I'm gonna mark 
the beginning and the end of the hole. And yeah, the, the knit uh, fabric stretches a little bit, so hold on to it in that area. And I'm actually going to chalk the edge of this. This was the either the seam line or the folded edge when we um, cut this out, right? So I'm just gonna mark that line, get in here, mark this end point and start point a little bit better. All right, so let's have a look at that. So now I have a stitch line and we're gonna stitch from here using a regular stitch length. Um, make sure that your tension isn't too tight, otherwise you're gonna get some um, uh, pulling here. So straight stitch from the top down to this point and tack, and then come here at the bottom and tack here and stitch to the bottom. Do not stitch between the top and the bottom of the whole area. And I'll show you how that's going to work out after I get that done. So I'm gonna run over to the machine. Actually, let me just go ahead and pin in a couple of spots to keep these together. Real quick. And I'm gonna go over to my regular sewing machine and straight stitch those areas. Okay, so now that that's been uh, stitched together, I'm actually just gonna trim up these threads real quick, get those out of the way. And then what you're going to do is let me flip this over to the other side. Okay. And then flip this over and then I'm going to flip this other piece over, right? So we're matching the wrong sides to the wrong sides. And then let me just kind of lay this out and see that there's an opening here, right? Now it's not a circle, so this might be a little bit more snug, but uh, you could actually adjust that by the stitch length, um, how long it is from here to here um, and to the bottom. I wouldn't probably mess with this because we've got a quarter inch seam allowance that we're gonna be sewing into the other pieces. So now this um, will actually sew in just like the other pieces um, the bottom pouch, you will sew this right onto the bottom pouch, just like in the rest of the video from this point. Okay, so now we have our whole opening completely done. And this is actually the most difficult part of this garment, actually. Um, again, if you don't wanna do the binding and you do want that hole, then of course you can just overlock those pieces. Um, and then if you want to, you can tuck them in, just fold it up the, at the end of the overlocking and stitch around the hole. Make sure you do a zigzag stitch, otherwise it won't stretch. Okay, so we've got that done. We can set that aside. We can work on the uh, lower part of that pouch. So this lower pouch, make sure that you are matching face sides together. Line those up there, and we're going to stitch along this longer curved area. So I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna stitch from the bottom and I'll put a pin here. And I don't normally pin this, but uh, I pin the pieces together for you so you know what area you're going to be sewing on. So I'm gonna stitch using the overlock all the way up this way. Okay, so our lower patch, pouch has been uh, joined together. So let's uh, have, look at, have a look at what it looks like on the face side. So we have just a little bit of a curve there, an area. So this top part, the wider part, we're going to match face sides together at the seam to this piece. And I'll just go ahead and pin this together. So let's do it on this side. So I want... Uh, the seam allowance is kind of going the same way. You could alternate them if you want to, but sometimes it's hard to get that uh, seam on the underside of the overlock to go in the right direction. So this will just be a little bit easier to get them to go the same way. Okay, now these are all pinned together. I'm gonna overlock this together. So let's just, I can pull this so you can kind of see what that's going to look like. And if I put it here on the side, it actually starts looking like that piece for the regular boxer brief, right? So again, I'm just going to overlock this together on this side.
Okay, so our lower pouch has been sewn to the whole piece. So that's what it looks like there. And now we have the upper pouch or the outer pouch. And I have the piece here, I'm gonna unfold it. Remember, we cut this on the fold. And what I need to do is I need to fold these notches up to this notch, and this is actually the fold line. So let's just get that folded. And um, this just creates a little pocket for you. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and pin this. Now, you could use your straight stitch and tack this in place. Uh, let me get this over here on the other side. Um, now this inside, whoops, I forgot a step. So let me just explain. So the inside here, this is actually smaller than the width that is being folded up to. Um, and that's just to actually keep everything together um, and actually give it more of a little bit more of a fitted area um, up underneath. And so let me just show you really quick, even though I forgot a step. Um, let me pin this and what it creates is a little pocket, okay? So the step that I forgot is the overlocking of this edge. So I'm actually gonna do that really quickly. I will overlock this. Um, of course, you don't need to, this won't un unravel, but it just kind of makes a nicer uh, look and a nicer feel. So when you overlock a single layer of the uh, knit, you probably want to loosen up the tension on the needle threads. Um, and that way it won't kind of scrunch everything together. So I'm gonna do that really quick and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back, I've got the overlocking done here. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip this over. Again, I'm gonna fold on this notch to match these other notches together. Now, of course, like I said before, you could um, I straight stitch these together, but this piece is actually going to go right on top of this piece. I'm going to hold that, and again, this area here is slightly more narrow than the width it's going into, and I probably should have pinned those on the other side. So this is what it looks like when you fold it up, and I'm actually probably going to repin those. So this is the outside, and I will repin those. Make sure your notches are still matching. Again, this fabric is really lightweight. Sometimes it has a mind of its own. Okay, get this all pinned. Now, we have our top pouch here, or our under pouch, really. We're going to lay this on top of this, this notch. This notch here is gonna go to the seam. So we'll match that notch up to the seam, get all those layers in there, and then we can repin that all together. And then make sure that this other notch here, that it goes down to the side. And that your edges here are nice and uh, flush there. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. The notch here is gonna match the seam. I'm gonna go ahead and pin that. And then, looks like my notch is a little bit off. The folded edge, the edge there, is it, all the edges are together. And then I'm going to actually match all of these other edges. And this is actually, I'm gonna just do a long uh, running basting stitch to actually keep these all together. So basically these edges are all together and make sure underneath that all of that is there at the edge. And um, just do a long basting stitch um, down here just to keep all of those together. Because this whole piece now is going to get sewn to the body of the garment.
Okay, so our front pouch area section is all completed. I'm gonna just kind of trim up some of these threads. Now, from that basting stitch, if you feel like it's too, you uh, actually stitched over the quarter inch, that's okay because you can rip that out. That's not going to be a seam that is actually going to be needed once you get that um, on the actual garment. So this is the outer pouch, and if we look inside, then we have the hole there and then uh, the lower pouch. And on the inside, it goes like this. So you go in here like this for the top and then the lower pouch for the bottom. So now what's going to happen is that we're gonna actually put this to the body and this is the body. And so I'm going to open this up and let's just get one side ready here. So this is the area it's going to be going to, and we're going to match face sides together. Remember this notch here? I'm gonna match that notch right up there. And make sure that all of your straight edges are flush. So I'll go ahead and pin this. I think I'll stitch from the bottom up. Make sure all of these areas are matching. There is a curve here. So we'll just make sure everything gets lined up here and I'm just going to take double care in this actual folded area here that everything is lined up to the edge so that gets caught in the machine and then on up to the top here all right and maybe I'll put another pin right here in the middle just to keep everything together okay so now when we sew it the outside, it will be sewn um, with this seam like this. So I'm going to go and now stitch this with the overlock all the way up to the top. All right, so now we have um, one side of the pouch sewn to one side of the body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around to the other side. This is the other front here. And make sure that my body is not going to be twisted, right? So let me just fold this so you can see. Okay. Make sure your body doesn't get twisted. Otherwise, you'll have to rip out all of your overlocking. So now I'm going to take the other side of that pouch and I'll match it the same way I did before. I like to net match this notch first. And then match the other um, side down. Now, one thing about one of the sides is that I always like to sew in the same direction so I sewed from the bottom, and if you notice, I can't really sew from the bottom this side. So the machine is over on this side. So I'm gonna actually have to sew this way. So I need to readjust my pinning. So I'm gonna grab this and pin it from this side, and then pin the bottom, repin the bottom that way. And I'm gonna put an extra pin here, making sure that all of these thicknesses are actually going are all attached and going to get into that stitch seam. And then I'll have to repin this. So the reason I sew from the same direction on either side is so that we don't get any pulling in opposite directions. Okay, so that's all pin. This is what it looks like on the other side. So I'm going to sew on this side from here all the way up to here. Okay, so we have the other side, side sewn together. Let's actually just kind of fold this out flat, right? So there it is. Let me trim that off. Okay, so I'm going to just turn this uh, face side out so you can see what that looks like now. Um, the next step is actually we're going to sew the crotch seam together. So this is how it looks. This is your upper pouch and then the hole is here and then your lower pouch. So let's uh, turn this uh, face sides uh, together again. And then all we need to do, this is our crotch seam here, 
is I'm going to find the center here really quick by folding these this inseam, this crotch seam here, and I'll just gently um, guesstimate that that's about the center. Put a pin there really quickly just to hold it, and then I'm going to match that to the seam on a lower pouch. Okay. And then pin it in place, and then I will walk these legs back out to each other. You may need to stretch, and what that stretch does is it holds, keeps everything held in to fit a little bit more snug. Now, uh, one thing on the bottom, if, unless you uh, stitch on this side, we want these seam allowances to actually be going away from the center. So make sure that they are flat away from that. Otherwise, if you sew in here, there's just gonna be too much um, going on in there and that may irritate you. So I like to have them folded away from the center. So just make sure that you try to get that done when you're in the machine sewing. Maybe I'll just put a little pin there just to remind myself. This first one will be difficult um, because it's going in the opposite direction of the sewing, but this one will actually be going in the direction of the sewing. Okay, so I'm just gonna overlock this together from here all the way around here. Okay, so uh, since I'm here, I'm actually going to do um, get something done before we do the next step, which is actually to hem the leg openings. So I'm gonna overlock the uh, edge of the leg opening, and I'm gonna be really careful not to cut anything. Now also, when you do that, you wanna make sure that the seam, the crotch seam, is folded toward the back. So I'm gonna start somewhere around here and make sure that that uh, seam actually gets folded toward the back. And now I say be careful not to cut anything off because I give you about a half inch hem allowance. So if you cut something off here and then you measure to turn it up, your, your hem allowance, your, your short, or your boxer brief will come out shorter than perhaps you anticipated. Okay, so we're actually ready to start the hem, and I'm gonna do the hem before I do the waistband, and the reason I'm doing the hem first is because I'm using a cover stitch machine, and for the hem, I want to have just two, uh, two needles, uh, st two needle stitching, and for the waistband, I wanna put three needles. So I'm gonna start with the two, and then I'll add the needle to the cover stitch machine and put the waistband on. So this is the inside, we've got everything together, and you saw me go ahead and overlock the uh, bottom of the hem, and now we just need to turn this up a half inch and um, stitch it down. Now, you don't necessarily, if you're using a cover stitch, you don't necessarily need to overlock the edge, um, as well as you don't really need to do it with the zigzag either, but it makes a cleaner finish, um, especially if you have a zigzag. But if you catch it just right in your cover stitch machine, the edge would be caught anyway. So the way I like to do this, instead of just turning it up, going around with my ruler and pinning it, I actually like to mark it with my chalk. So let me turn this face side out. There is a slight curve around the front area so you will need to stretch slightly. So let me get this one leg. So I like to actually mark with the chalk, and I actually just double checked the pattern. I was wrong, I was used to doing a half inch. So it's actually a three quarter inch hem allowance. So uh, I'll just back up there again and say, the hem allowance is three quarter inch as is printed on the pattern. And so I just like to mark chalk, and a lot of times when I'm in the cover stitch or in the sewing machine, even if I'm doing a zigzag stitch, I don't actually pin. I just use the marks and turn it up. Um, I've just gotten used to that. As you probably noticed, I'm not, even though I've done a lot of pinning for you, I'm not really 
a huge pinner. So, um, because I think the, the pins, when I want to get things made and done, pins actually kind of slow me down. So what I'll do is I'll just mark what I need to do with chalk, and then that chalk comes out with heat. So I'll just get the rest of this, and then I will go ahead and pin this up for you so you can see um, what I'm talking about. Um, and then I'll go ahead and put it in the cover stitch machine. Now, of course, if you're gonna use a cover stitch, every machine is differently, so you'll need to have to set that up. And I'm using a two needle, and it's gonna be a narrow width, and the, the distance between the needles is called the gauge, and so the distance between the needles is one eighth of an inch. So now, um, I'm gonna turn this face side out. I'm sorry, <laughs> inside out. And then I will just actually turn up on my markings. And now because I'm using a cover stitch, I have to pin on the top because the cover stitch sews on the face side of the fabric. So just get these pins kind of going around so you can see this. And it's usually a good idea when you're doing hems on knits to just stretch it lightly um, especially if this like this is a leg opening and this is much smaller than your leg is going to be so um, it actually actually needs to stretch beyond what it um, is re it, what it is in its relaxed state so I'll turn this face side out so you can see this the pins I'm just gonna do this one leg because I'm gonna trust that you don't need to see me do both legs all right so this is how it's pinned, and I'm going to start probably some around, somewhere around here on the back so it's not noticeable on the front. Okay, so just before I start sewing, I'm just gonna give you a little tip about working with your cover stitch machine. I have a piece of tape here. I'm gonna just set it right here for right now. Um, so the idea is that when you are cover stitching, your needle actually comes, one of your needles come right on this side, which actually uh, covers this whole section. So what you'll have to do is go ahead and you've got everything turned up, go ahead and put your fabric under the presser foot and kind of feel with your finger. And I kind of like to put the, the needles down and then fill with my finger and okay I can kind of judge by eye and feeling that's the edge of the hem allowance and so that's where I want it to actually go along and there's also some markings here on my presser foot um, but those also go with the needles so I want to make sure that one of those needles comes here because the idea is that we actually cover if you have a cut edge now I've overlocked so it's clean finished so what you want to do is once you've got that all set go ahead and take a piece of tape and this is painters tape so it has low tack and then just put it here tape it here where the edge of your uh, garment is where the hem is and we'll try to make that as straight as possibly straight as I can okay that looks pretty good right so now when we feed through here I'm gonna actually guide that edge right along this uh, edge of the tape tape okay so I'm going to release these threads that I taped down um, and then we'll get this sewn Okay, so now when you come back to your original stitches, you actually want to actually stitch over them in the same place. And I'm just clipping the top threads off. And we're gonna look at where these stitches are and hopefully line them right up into where the needles are. And I have marks here on my presser foot. We want them to go right into those markings underneath those needles because there's no back stitch on a cover stitch machine. So we actually want to stitch over this and I like to do a half inch to an inch. And remember that when you take this out of the machine, 
this is all a chain stitch. So if you're pulling it, that chain is gonna automatically come out. So you'll see me take this out and then very carefully pinch the fabric where the stitching is and then pull it out further to actually clip it. So I wanna make sure that I go over these stitches um, right on top of each other for at least an inch. Okay, so we're ready to prepare the elastic. And I like to use this sport elastic. It's one and a quarter inch wide. And that's actually how I build the patterns to use one and a quarter inch wide elastic. So you can use any kind of elastic that you would like. You could probably go up to one and a half inch wide elastic if you would like, if you can't find the one and a quarter inch. Um, the one and a half inch wide elastic won't really affect a lot of the sizing of the garment. So the reason I like this is because it has a really soft um, a feel to it and hand to it. Um, so it doesn't actually restrict your waist a lot. So that's why I like this elastic. But again, you can actually use any kind of waistband style elastic that you prefer. So be sure that you reference the uh, cut amounts which are printed directly on one of the pages of the pattern. So know that these amounts match actually pretty close to the actual size of the garment itself. These measurements have the seam allowances included, so the finished ring that you're going to be making for the waistband will actually be a little bit smaller than these measurements, which is actually um, how it's supposed to be. So understand that if you need to adjust the measurement of the elastic, you should really only be um, making it smaller. You can't really have an elastic ring that is actually larger than the garment that you're making. If you need the elastic to be larger, then you should actually go up a size in the garment that you're making. So I'm gonna get this ready. So I'm actually making a medium. So I'm just going to measure out the 32 inches that I need and cut. And like I said before, the seam allowances are included. Okay, so um, now there is kind of a face side and a wrong side to this. So the face side is also known as the right side, but I say face side because um, there's also a right and a left of the garment. So I don't want you to get confused. So the face side of this is actually the side that has the more ridgy feel to it. And the wrong side has a flatter feel. It's just a slight, slight subtle difference. So I'm going to match each of the cut ends, face sides together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just pin this together. And then I'm gonna actually sew this together with a straight stitch, uh, a half inch seam allowance. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark that. I don't usually mark it when I'm making stuff for myself, but I want you to see where I'm going to be stitching. Again, a straight stitch and you can use uh, a regular stitch length. Okay, so I've marked that and let me go ahead and pin this because I want to walk you through what I'm going to do uh, while I'm in the machine. Um, so what you're going to do after you sew that stitch line, you will press the seam allowance open. And I like to do, to hold this down, to hold each of these seam allowances down, I like to run a little zigzag stitch just covering up the cut edge um, back and forth. And you'll see me do that in the machine. So I'm going to run over to the machine and do that really quick.
Okay, so now that our ring is successfully um, sewn together, we actually just need to divide this into fourths, so equal fourths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half at that seam, just fold it straight in half, and on the opposite end of the fold, I'm going to put a pin here. And then I'm going to take that pin and I'm going to match that up to the seam. So that's there. And now on each of the ends in those folds, I'm going to put a pin. So I'll put a pin at this fold. And then I'm going to put a pin on this fold. And so now our ring is, to divi is divided into four equal parts. And now it's ready to be applied to the garment. Okay, so we've got our hem done. Everything else is done. All we need to do is the waistband. And if you remember the uh, elastic waistband preparation, everything is ready to go. Um, but I'm actually not going to use this band. Um, I'm actually going to use this elastic, which is actually left over from when I owned my underwear and swimwear line. So I have lots of this elastic left. So I'm going to use this because I'm running low on this particular type and I don't know when I'm gonna be able to get out to uh, get some more. So um, I've actually done it exactly the same way. I've sewn the seam, I've finished the edges here, and then I have divided the ring into fourths. So, and uh, I should probably just mention that this, this is one and a half inch wide, and that's really not going to actually change a lot of the appearance. Um, instead of the one and a quarter inch wide. So it's up to you whether what width you use. Okay, so to get this on, we have this um, divided into fourths. Now we need to divide the waistband of the garment into fourths. And let me turn this face side out. Okay, so because there are no side seams or a center back seam, it's kind of hard for us to tell. And a lot of times when the side seams actually are not a quarter uh, of the waistband. So um, what I'm going to do is if we look on the inside, here is the center front seam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it, the waistband in half at that seam and gently try not to stretch, just kind of walk that up to find the center back. And I'm going to pin this. Okay, so there's our center back. So open this back up, match the pin, the center back pin to that center front seam. And then gently, I'm gonna actually pin the both of them together just to uh, make it easier so it doesn't fall out of my hand. Then I'm gonna gently walk the edge of that fabric up on either side, and that will be the side. Okay, and then I'll gently do it on the other side. Really try not to stretch this. Okay, so now I'm gonna unpin this, but I'll keep the pin at the center back here. All right, so I'm gonna turn it so I see the back because I like to start with the back. And I'm gonna take my elastic and because I have my name on it, I gotta make sure that it's going the right way. So if I put it this way, then my name will be upside down. So um, I'm first going to match the center back seam to the cent on top of the pin. And I like to match the edge of the garment to the top edge of the fabric, just like that. That's the way I've designed this. And then I'm gonna take another pin and just pin the bottom of that. And then I will go around and match the next pins and I will walk this all the way around. And because I have two pins here, make sure that there's no pleating going on. Match the top edge of the elastic there. I'll take the pin out of the elastic and then I'll pin the bottom of the elastic just like that. And now I'm coming up to the front area, and of course I don't have a center front seam on the front pouch here, but I do on the inside. So I'm just gonna use my finger and just kind of look and match where that goes. And then I'll pin, I'll pin the center front this way 
it'll be easier that way because I don't have a second pin. And then I'll find my other pin and match that there. And I'll take the elastic pin and just pin there at the bottom, okay? So now I'm gonna fold this out, lay this out there. Now to give myself a little bit more stability because like running through this, it's kind of seems kind of flimsy, right? So I want to actually, I'm gonna pin the top of the elastic to the garment as well. And it's hard to do this. I'm doing this upside down so you can see it. So I'll just take the other pins and just pin here. And then on this one, because I pinned it going vertically, I'm just gonna grab a couple, one more pin, pin the bottom of it. And that's actually where the stitch line is gonna go at the bottom of the elastic. Just get this all nice and secure all the way around so the elastic doesn't move around. Now, the fabric will probably also wanna move around on you. So once you're in the machine, you'll have to manage that fabric. Now, the waistband should closely pretty much match the width of your uh, the garment, and that's the way it's designed. That's the way most um, swimwear or underwear is actually designed because everything stretches, so it stretches around your body together. So um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put this in, machine and, uh, in the machine and get this stitched. Now, if you feel like you need a little bit more help along the way, you could actually put pins in the middle of all of that. Just remember the more pins you put in, the more pins you have to take out. So when I put this in the machine, I'm gonna actually turn this wrong side out and I'm gonna put it in the machine that way so that um, I'm stitching inside this tunnel here. And I'm gonna start here, just on this side of where this, the seam is on the elastic, because I'm gonna, when I come back around to end it, instead of back stitching, the cover stitch machine doesn't have a back stitch. So I'm gonna to wanna to stitch all the way over across this, and then I'll stop right here about here. So I will release these pins as I go, but I'm gonna keep these pins in. Now, just one note of help. As you go, you will probably want to stretch from front to back just slightly. That will help guide it through the machine, but also give enough give so that it will stretch beyond its stretching ability. And that's actually the way you wanna kinda of stretch your elastics onto your waistband. So let's move over to the cover stitch machine. Okay, so just before I begin, I just wanna let you know, you wanna keep an eye on the fabric underneath so that, so that it doesn't slip down like this or get tangled up as you sew. And the idea of this is once I get this into the machine on here, under here, this needle here, the far one on your left, should actually be going right on the edge of the elastic here. That's kind of the idea. So that's the way I'm gonna to try to sew this. And I'm gonna start about here and then when I come back, I'm gonna stitch all the way over that back, all the way across, um, okay? So um, I'm actually going to maybe speed that up a little bit. You won't hear me talking during it because the machine is kind of loud. So just understand that you wanna keep an eye on your fabric underneath, um, and then watch your needle here right on the edge of the elastic. Okay, so I've got the elastic on and it looks like I lost the last part of the video where I came back to um, the starting point. So basically, I actually just clipped the threads before I came into it and then I made sure that uh, the needles were actually right on top of my stitching here. And then um, I actually stopped about an inch past the center seam and then I took it out of the machine. Um, and then underneath you'll actually see that as well. And let me just go ahead and clip this extra thread. Now, when you take it out of the machine, go ahead and clip your front threads. And then for the cover stitch machine, you just wanna clip a couple of those little loops so that that thread can't undo the loop um, after you get it done. So I did that pretty well here. There's a little loop, I can clip that one. And it won't hurt any of the stitching at all um, on your 
second row. Now I'm going to take these extra pins out that I had up here on the top. There's one more thing that you can do. And I'm going to turn this uh, inside out. And I'm, you have this extra fabric here. It's just the way that I've designed this. Um, makes it easier to get the elastic on. And I'm going to cut this extra off. So you want to get close to your stitching, but not on top of it. So the more underwear that you make this way, the more you get used to how you should be clipping, cutting this. And I'm just kind of pulling the fabric away and then clipping into it. And this center part takes a little bit more care. All right. We'll get this done here in a minute, and then the entire underwear will be done. All right. So this is now the finished dual pouch boxer brief underwear with the elastic waistband, and I did everything with the cover stitch.